Uh, all right, here we are on episode, what are we on here, Ryan? 10, maybe? Yes. Episode 10 of Digital First, our podcast about digital transformation and tech innovation. Uh, and I am extremely excited to have Jay Rimley on the podcast here today. Jay, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and, and, and Matterport, and then I'll, I'll get into the story about how we met. Prior to Matterport, I spent time at Google, uh, where I led the Google Maps team in digitizing the exterior uh, of the uh, of the built world uh, with Google Maps and Google Street View and Google Earth and so forth. And when the opportunity came along to, you know, now let's go digitize the largest asset class in the world, which is the built world, and take that from offline or largely offline to online, uh, that's when I joined Matterport uh, in July of uh, yeah July 2019. So coming up on two years. Right on. Well, man, I'm, I'm glad you dove right into the, the, the topic of the spatial uh, physical world being the largest asset class, because that was one of the things that I wanted to uh, to really get into here. So let's 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 dive into the stats. So here's what I know. And then you, you can expound on it a little bit. So you guys Matterport, you, you've worked with thousands of companies, 150 countries, Five million uh, digital twins created, and we'll get into what a digital twin is uh, in a minute here. Ten billion square feet. But what you just said is four, 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 four billion buildings in the world is what I read. Twenty billion spaces available, which account for a two hundred and thirty trillion dollar asset class. Is that? T- tell me about that. I mean, that seems yeah. massive. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. It's a massive opportunity and it's a massive market. You know, the built world, you know, buildings out there in, in, in the world uh, that we live in today is uh, we estimate is roughly around 230, you know, trillion. And mm-hmm. uh, what makes that up is roughly 4 billion buildings and about 20 mm-hmm. billion spaces, meaning kind of the average building has roughly, you know, five spaces. So it might be a, an office building, hmm. but there's five different offices inside of that. Or it could be a retail, you know, mm-hmm. store, uh, strip mall, and there's, you know, five maybe stores, you know, within that building or that structure. Mm-hmm. And from an asset class perspective, yeah, it's it's valued at, you know, the, real, the built world. It's a $230 trillion asset class out there uh, all the st- all the public stock markets combined uh, it's bigger than, than all of those and just from a buildings and space perspective you know there's there's more spaces and buildings out there than there are websites and so when you think about what Google did to go index you know every website out there you know the opportunity uh, and what we're heading towards to be the next big you know uh, tech platform uh, it's that size of scale you know an opportunity and every most large buildings and large structures out there are largely offline, you know, we're still going and doing physical, you know, site visits to have the contractor come out and measure your kitchen or, you know, physically go maybe view a home if you're interested in leasing a home or an apartment or buying a home or leasing an office space. And so there's still a lot of, uh, you know, in-person manual effort that goes into, you know, managing the built world. And we think we have an opportunity to go disrupt that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's outstanding. So uh, tell me about, Man, there's so much to dig into. Tell me, tell me about the tech. So Cortex AI, uh, how, how deep can we get into that? And you know, it, it, it's what I might do is I might pull it up on my on my computer, um, and 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 we can look at some visuals because I think that that helps. But tell me about Cortex, uh, and while you're doing that, I'm going to pull it up on my screen and we can dig into it here. Yeah, for sure. So. You know, Matterport's a 10 year old, you know, company. We're celebrating our 10th anniversary coming up here in June. And so we've been around quite a while. And um, the the main, you know, initial technology of Matterport was our founders had the idea of um, how do you create a more immersive, you know, uh, image of a space that's dimensionally accurate. And there were a lot of high res cameras out there, 2D cameras, but nothing that could really create an accurate you know, um, 3D or a digital twin, spatially accurate, dimensionally accurate um, uh, image of a space. And so they had the idea of putting depth sensors inside of uh, a 4K camera. And it started out with a, a Pro One camera. It was a Matterport camera and launched that seven, eight years ago. And uh, we've got an amazing, you know, data set because of that. We actually understand 
you know, how, um, you know, because of our camera and the millions and millions of spaces we've captured with it, we have gotten really, really good now at understanding different dimensions of all different types of buildings. You know, every building is like a different person. It's its own DNA. No one building mm-hmm. is alike. And so training and having that massive data set that we have um, of millions and millions of spaces across the world uh, has really given us the ability now to unlock and get out from behind the camera and really use any type of capture device because of uh, Cortex, our AI engine. And so what Cortex really allows uh, you to do is, is we've launched the ability now to go capture any space with a 360 camera, you know, a, a 300, 400, 500 dollar Rico or Insta uh-huh. 360 camera, or even now down to your smartphone. We launched um, uh, Matterport for iPhone, you know, the middle of last year. Uh, we now can use a 2D camera, create a, um, a 360 image in 2D, and Cortex is what predicts the depth of that imagery as we stitch it together in our software to then create a 96, 97, 98% dimensionally accurate 3D model of that space from the 2D camera, whether that's a, a insta- like I said, a, a 360 camera or even now down to your smartphone. So we're pretty excited about how... Um, our software and our AI engine and the ability to predict depth and create very, very high fidelity and dimensionally accurate models of any space. Uh, really getting out from behind the camera now, it's unlocking a whole new uh, market, you know, for us. Yeah. And you know, you're starting to see that now just with our growth over the last, you know, 12 to 15 months. So did it did it start in a certain vertical and, and expand from there? Or tell me about the sort of the, the, the genesis of this concept. Yeah, I mean, our, our, our roots as a company, uh, long before my time, of course, really started uh, in, in residential real estate. And, mm-hmm. you know, one of the challenges was, you know, people were interested in actually going and seeing a home, but maybe didn't have the time during the week or the mm-hmm. real estate agent wasn't available to go take them on the weekend, whatever it may be. Um, but the 2D photos that you see, you know, on, on real estate portals and so forth, just yeah. don't do a property justice. And so uh, the initial, you know, market entry, you know, for Matterport, you know, back seven, eight years ago was really in the residential real estate space. Then, of course, mm-hmm. that expanded into commercial real estate, you know, your um, uh, apartments.com or whoever it may be, property management company looking to lease mm-hmm. a house or lease a, uh, an apartment. And of course, started to expand, you know, from there and then into commercial, you know, real estate. You know, we have the largest, you know, global contracts now, you know, with the largest global real estate, you know, commercial real estate companies out there. And so it's definitely expanded. But the as we think about it, you'll hear us talk about the digital property life cycle. You know, every every built thing in the world goes through pretty much the same life cycle from designing the space, whether that's a camper, a yacht. Mm-hmm. Uh, museum, you know, we, we've Matterported every type of space out there. Uh, just go to Google and, you know, type any type of, uh, type in any structure dash Matterport or plus Matterport or, you know, it'll come hmm. up. But um, uh, yeah, it's every, every structure out there goes through a design phase, a build phase. Once you build it, you have to promote it, you know, let people know it exists. Then you have to operate it. Uh, then usually people will ensure it. You need to protect it. And then things are going to happen or over time, you're going to want to repair it or restore it. And uh, so as we think about it, you know, design, build, promote, operate that space, ensure and repair. We call that our digital property life cycle. Huh. And we play in every one of those, you know, sectors uh, throughout any physical space. Uh, so so from, a, from, from a revenue model standpoint, you're not it's not just like someone you know, uses Matterport one time and then they're done. Like they need, you know, it's a, they keep updating it as the space changes over time. There's an ongoing revenue model there. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So um, we have hardware, we have our, you know, monthly recurring SaaS revenue. And then of course we have our service offerings um, on top of that. But um, yeah, we, we integrate with a lot of the major enterprise software platforms. So if you're, you know, constructing Salesforce, you know, one tower in San Francisco, you know, a lot of construction companies use us during the build process and then mm-hmm. collaborating back with the engineering and architectural firms, you know, for that building to compare the as-built with um, the actual design of the building. 
because we all know that um, buildings, the way they're designed and architected, there's things that come up out in the field you're not familiar with, you know, during the design phase, shortcuts are taken and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, you can take the Matterport, you know, uh, uh, 3D model, digital twin, you know, and we integrate with Autodesk, Procore, BIM 360, et cetera, to be able to compare, you know, the as built with, you know, how it was designed. And then all the way through, the insurance, you know, space, when something happens to that building, there's a claim, there's a fire tornado and a claim. You can take, you know, go in, take the Matterport scan. We integrate with claims management software, um, you know, that then automates and centralizes the whole claims management process for insurance companies. So so are there open of, APIs and stuff in terms of being able to push and pull data in and out of Matterport? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. So, you know, when we say we, you know, a lot of what Matterport's known for, to your question earlier around, um, we grew up kind of in the promote space. You know, we were mm-hmm. really that that visualization layer. Everybody would look at it and like, wow, that's amazing video. It's not a video. You know, it's it's an interactive, you know, digital model that you can yeah. move around in and control and so forth. But we also understand everything under that model. It's not just the visualization layer, but we've got all the data underneath it. So all the dimensions of the walls, we understand what's in the in that. Is it floor one? Is it floor two? We understand the type of space. Um, so floor plans, and um, you know, because we go in and, and our Cortex and AI engine recognize not just um, objects and to, or not just dimensions, but also objects. It allows us to automate, you know, the understanding of that space. Meaning, we go in and, and our capture recognizes. Uh, uh, there's a stove, a refrigerator, and a microwave. 99% mm-hmm. confidence we label that space a kitchen. Or <laughs> we go in and understand and recognize that's a toilet, that's a sink, a tub. 99% confidence we label that space a bathroom. And Very so we interesting. understand not just, you know, the the dimensional accuracy, but also the objects, you know, inside the space, which then allow us to automate and understand the type of space as well. <laughs> Very so interesting. We expose, we expose all that data through through our through our APIs. So, and and I probably should know this already, but I mean, is there a business model around the API in terms of access to the data and and you know in yeah. terms of a go forward revenue model? Is that part of the plan? Yeah, absolutely. It's already there. We've got hundreds and hundreds of partners already building applications. You know, on top of Matterport or our enterprise customers. You know, as they digitize uh, their buildings, um, interacting with those buildings in an automated, you know, fashion into then their enterprise hmm. uh, workflows and software. So, you know, there's a there's a, a hosting of the model. So, you know, mm-hmm. taking your model and in and, and your building online uh, through Matterport, and then there's the business model of building applications and integrations on top of that, which is a key part of our of our platform, you know, offering, uh, that we, uh, that we have that wow. really mostly technology partners, um, as well as enterprise, you know, customers really using that. Interesting. And one thing that really caught my attention was this is the first time in a long time where a company's brand has been used as a verb. And uh, and you 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 did it, you know, last time we talked a week or so ago when we were prepping and I just thought it was fitting that the guy that ran Google Maps is working for this other company which is the the next time I've ever heard a, a company that uses a brand. You know, you you made a reference to what well, we would just matterport it and I, I wonder did that happen by accident? Was that strategic? Are customers doing that? Tell me about that. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty funny. We we talk about that. You know, you kind of know when um, I don't want to say you've made it, but as a company, you know, when your when your name transitions to a verb, yeah, you know, you've become known in the category, right? Where absolutely people don't go say, "Let's go get a ride." Let's go. Let's go ride share. They say, "No, let's go Uber." Yeah, let's get an Uber. Yeah, let's not get somebody to deliver our food. You know, let's go DoorDash. And yeah, we hear yeah. the same thing, or, you know, you want to go search for something. People don't go say, you know, let's go down to the library. They say, go Google it. And yeah, so, let's go Alta Vista. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's go, let's go excite it. No, it's, yeah. um, yeah, we hear customers saying it all the time. It was, it was kind of cool, you know, coming to Matterport and That's getting cool. out there and talking to our customers and partners. And we hear that all the time, you know, Hey, can you come Matterport my space? Can you come Matterport my office? Can you come Matterport my project, my, my construction project? So yeah, it's, um, you know, we've got, 
close to 300,000 subscribers, you know, 45,000 plus, you know, paying customers. And so it's, uh, it's really taken off uh, in the last, you know, couple years. And so, you know, it's, it is kind of cool though, to hear people uh, from the outside use this as a verb. So. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, all right, let's talk about retail. Uh, a lot of our audience is retail, e-commerce brands, people that have, uh, you know, either physical store locations or warehouses or the combination of the two. Um, what, what, what's going on in that space and how does Matterport fit into that? You know, the last, well, 2020 with the pandemic, e-commerce went nuts and likely is going to continue to do so. Tell me, help me understand your guys' plan there. Yeah. Yeah, retail is, uh, it's an exploding, you know, space for us. I think a lot of people are realizing through this pandemic just how much productivity and efficiencies they can gain, you know, through going virtual. We basically go in and we'll vir- we virtualize a space. We take that physical space, you know, from a offline to online and then make it available to anybody, right, through a web browser or mobile uh, device. And so, you know, for retail, the pandemic, of course, people couldn't visit stores and, We've got three main areas where we're really seeing retail, uh, you know, coming to us. One is around virtual commerce. I think people realize that, um, you know, with traditional e-commerce, you don't really know the intent. And it's really just going to uh, a retailer's um, e-commerce site and you pretty much know what you want and you just go there and buy that. And we're seeing Mm -hmm. increased basket uh, basket sizes uh, through what we're what we see now is virtual commerce, which is much more immersive. You can literally walk through the store, you know, Mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, Ferguson and you're looking for, you know, fixtures, you know, plumbing fixtures and so forth for your bathroom or whatnot, or it could Mm -hmm. be a furniture store, whatever it may be, but you actually can walk through that store and then click, see all the dimensions, click to buy. So it's almost, it's as close to being there as, as being there. We've got a few retailers that are interested in, because we do enable um, uh, VR through our platform. And so, you know, if you've got Oculus glasses or Google Cardboard, you, mm-hmm. know, you can throw those on and walk through the, the, the space in VR. Uh, but you guys have hooks to into a lot of the big e-com platforms, right? Yeah, so that's through our APIs, right? So we okay. can, yeah, through our APIs, we can integrate with the e-commerce uh, engine. And we also have a feature called Matter Tags. And so you yeah, know, yeah. Can Matter okay. Tag and keep a lightweight integration and just a link out to say a particular product listing page or whatnot. And another is, verb, another verb. Yeah. Matter tagging it. Um, but, but virtual commerce is definitely something because we understand where people are going inside the model. So it's not just on the e-commerce site where you see people go and shop for a hat or shop for a, uh, uh, you know, recliner, whatever it may be. Uh, mm-hmm. We understand actually where they go and how much time they spend walking through your furniture store. Well, interesting. They just spent, you know, uh, twice as much time while they were in your store in the kitchen section, even though they in the dining room sets, even though they just purchased a sofa. You know, mm-hmm. hey, maybe go back and understand, are they really now looking for, you know, a kitchen set next? So we understand yeah. much more than intent. We understand, you know, behavior while they're walking through the Matterport space. And uh, so the other key use cases, though, is, it's amazing within retail and it, especially for our retail customers that are managing thousands of stores, um, just physical site visits around merchandising and uh, store audits, making sure that stores are um, uh, up to um, up to code as far as safety and whatnot. So merchandising, you know, when a certain section of the store changes, uh, doing a Matterport update and then you can compare how, you know, your store in your CVS, Walgreens, whoever it may be, how that looks in, say, uh, your store in Kansas City versus your store in San Francisco. Are there mm-hmm. any differences and are they are they updated and are they up to the standards, right? Uh, historically, a lot of that might just be literally retailers sending people physically to the stores on a regular basis to do site <laughs> visits and merchandising audits. Um, we can automate, you know, we automate all of that, so... Interesting. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that that has jumped out for me here is that there there's a lot of talk about the the the, the connection or the the closing of the gap between digital and the physical retail world. But this this to me is the first time in a while uh, that I've felt like a a, a platform company technology, whatever, had that 
you know, the hook, you know, this seems like a really, really, everything you guys are doing seems like a really nice way to, to pull the two together. I was telling you the other day that we have, we have several clients who have digital experiences and then they have the physical experience, but they view them as completely independent uh, channels, if you will. Yeah. Um, and a lot of brands and, and e-commerce marketers are trying to figure out how to close that gap. You guys seem to have a good uh, handle on that. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's building that reality bridge between, you know, the physical world and the online world. And, yeah. you know, historically, it's been more of like a um, just just a more of a web presence, you know, the traditional Internet, traditional website and commerce experience. Whereas, you know, now we bring as we turn a building and a space into, you know, a digital format, we truly transform that entire space to digital, not just in 2D, but 3D uh, to where that space comes to life you know, through the, through your, any, any browser or any mobile device. Yeah. I'm wondering, uh, I'm wondering as far as, you know, this may be down the road, but, or, or you may be already uh, way deep in it already, but in terms of web analytics, you know, the, in, in the last, you know, five to six years, the web analytics game has changed a lot from, uh, I, for the way I like to refer to it is from, from page views and sessions to, uh, users and events. You know, it used to be that you would, you'd look at your web analytics and be like, okay, well, we got this many page views on this page and this many sessions, and and that's great. But now, you know, with platforms like, say, like a mix panel or Heap Analytics, or there's the others out there that allow you to track users and actual behaviors, and you can say, okay, well, user, you know, one, two, three, four, five uh, has been to the site four times. They clicked on these pages. They did these events. They downloaded this thing. Uh, it, it, with, with Matterport, if you had that plugged into your analytics infrastructure, you could also say, well, they, you know, they virtual viewed this room or this space. Uh, they added this product to cart from a matter tag. Uh, what, talk to me about analytics and how, how that fits into your game plan. Yeah, it is. It's um, the analytics and the insights. I mean, being a data platform, that is the next, the next phase. We have some analytics built in. Uh, as far as, you know, where people are going in the space, what they're looking at, how much time they're spending, mm -hmm. you know, in the space, um, but bringing in other, you know, information uh, from the outside of that model and then building specific use cases on top of it. Right. Like, you know, one example would be we understand where people are going and how much time they're spending in a space. Let's just say it's a house. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's an open house. And, uh, you know, for a real estate agent, you know, if you're the um, the seller, you know, seller's agent, you could build a whole new, you know, demand gen, you know, analytics on top of it for the, the seller's agent. You know, where are people spending the majority of their time? Is it in the kitchen? If not, why not? Is it in the master bedroom? You know, if so, why and why not? And understanding, you know, what's really catching the eye of, you know, people as they're walking through the space and been building analytics you know, on top of that for particular use cases. Um, in that case, you know, just real estate, or it could be, you know, JLL Cushman and those analytics around leasing office space uh, in a particular city. Like why are certain people spending way more time in the micro kitchen in uh, San Francisco versus the micro kitchens not even getting being visited in the JLL buildings in Tokyo, for example. Yeah. So being able to also huh. do those analytics, you know, across your entire portfolio of real estate, so. Interesting. So, so this uh, this VR plugin for the Oculus. I mentioned this to you the other day when we were prepping. But the the so I, I was messing around on the Oculus the other night uh, that I just bought, and I went to I, I think it's just the browser on the Oculus. I'm not even sure exactly what or who provides the browser for Oculus. If it's Facebook or if it's another platform, but there there is a plugin for Matterport on the Oculus browser that's built in. You know, yeah. I didn't have to install anything or anything like that. And with two clicks, maybe, I was walking through a Ferrari dealership in Italy. Yeah. I mean, are you seeing growth in that? Like, how early are we in that VR curve? And, and, and I would guess, since this is a little bit of a leading question, I would guess that that's a massive growth area. Is that, am I right? Yeah. Yeah, huge yeah. area. Like we we've had VR built into Matterport in the plugins for for years, right? But the hardware adoption has I think yeah. been a barrier to that. It's just a little clunky. 
uh, yeah. to be wear, you know, to be wearing that around unless you're gaming or something like that. And we do, we, sure. you know, gaming is definitely, you know, something there, but we're seeing more traction in more of the industrial enterprise space where people are using, you know, the model of the, uh, the, the, the Matterport model of the Boeing, you know, 787 Dreamliner mm -hmm. uh, to use VR to train their uh, ground agents on how to clean the plane uh, mm. for COVID and, yeah. you know, how to train their ground crew and their flight crew and so forth without having to have the plane on the ground or the, uh, huh. you know, um, equipment on the ground or virtual training, you know, through the manufacturing floor before the employee even steps, you know, onto the job or during COVID, it's been more challenging to do on the job training, being able to do all of that training virtually. And we don't see, co we don't see this being, you know, uh, you know, slowing down post COVID. I mm -hmm. think the industry, you know, kind of that enterprise B2B use case specifically around employee engagement, employee training, and being able to do it at scale through a virtual environment of the, of the actual space is where we're seeing most of the traction. Uh, I think mm -hmm. on the consumer side, there's just still not that killer use case um, for VR. You know, we're seeing some gaming companies working with us now on, you know, hey, you want to you want to play a particular game, you know, a battle game, fortress, whatever. But the actual environment you're playing it in is your home or your buddy's home, you know, versus some crazy, you know, outdoor space in a field somewhere, you know, in the middle of nowhere or wherever it may be. You can mm -hmm. actually bring, you know, your space into the game. And so we're going to see some gaming, you know, come into it. We definitely see that here in the near future on the consumer side. But as far as VR and and uh, um, capabilities, uh, I think we'll probably see more traction in a more ROI based use case mm -hmm. in, the, in the B2B world. What about the small business area? I mean, the, the price point seems fair, right? I mean, for the, I would, I'm guessing for the, you know, for the small business, you know, say I'm a plumber or a, a realtor or, um, you know, a small yeah. retailer, there's no reason why I can't grab Matterport and Matterport my space and show it off, right? It seems pretty user-friendly, right? You don't need a consultant to help you, right? No, no, absolutely. It's the beauty of the um, technology. It's one of the things I loved about coming to Matterport is it's just simple. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can go online, sign up for a free account. You know, we've got for SMB, small business, small office, home office, Soho, you know, $9.99 a month, $10 a month account. Mm -hmm. uh, and it unlocks the unlocks, you know, the Matterport platform for you. And you can go capture your home or your kitchen with your with your uh, iPhone. We just launched uh, Android. You can capture it with your iPhone, you know, create the digital model, send it to your three contractors. They've got all the measurements and everything in it and get your quotes back. You know, you don't have to take time out of your day to have, you know, three different contractors come through and measure your mm. countertops or figure out, you know, uh, measure your kitchen and then come back with an estimate for you. Simply send them the Matterport model and they have everything there. Um, and yeah, you can get started for, for free. Uh, we launched mm. Premium uh, about two years ago now. And it's been a game changer for us as far as just uh, make, making it frictionless for anybody. You know, small business, consumer, all the way up to enterprise, you know, get started with Matterport and then, you know, use a, you can use a 360 camera, you can use your smartphone or, or if you want to go a little bit higher end, a lot of our construction companies, general contractors, professionals are, are using like a, a Matterport Pro 2 camera or even a high end, you know, like a BLK, you know, laser cam uh, camera, you know, they're, they're $20,000, you know, per camera. Uh, yeah, we support, we support those too. So we've tried to really Man. open up and open up the platform and make it available to, you know, anybody. Seems like a lot of opportunity for, for just from a marketing standpoint. I mean, the, the, the applications from a, you know, from a lead acquisition standpoint for, for, you know, search, you got all the different phones and cameras that you could tap into all the different business types. I mean, it would be really amazing to dig into that funnel and, I'd love to understand what the, you know, the conversion metrics look like from someone that goes to search, lands on a form. You know, I went through your funnel to just to get my head around how you guys were selling. I thought it was really interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, re yeah, we've really, got some really amazing. You know, I remember when I when I launched the uh, the Maps team and I uh, was part of the Google Cloud team, we launched the uh, Google Cloud or GCP. 
you know, we launched free and we saw the conversion metrics, right? And it's a similar playbook out there. Yeah. It's a great, uh, it's a great acquisition channel for us. You know, we've got everybody from 15% of the fortune, you know, 100 starting out with Matterport, you know, with a free account and then migrating hmm. it wow. and then turning into a much larger, you know, account. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, we're seeing all, all sizes and not, not very familiar, right. With the other, you know, playbooks out there before us, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's a uh, box or, you know, LinkedIn or, you know, Google apps or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it may be yeah. similar, similar playbooks, uh, when you launch well, the, the, you know, the teach don't sell model too, you know, you guys have the Matterport Academy. Tell me about that. I mean, I noticed that, that that's not, not an easy thing to, to get sold through to a marketing team, but you know, that, that seems like it's a good idea. Yeah, you know, it's we're we're like one percent of the built world right now. You know, we estimate there's four billion, you know, buildings out there. We've got um, a little over five million, you know, on our platform today. You know, we're adding <laughs> two hundred, wow. two hundred fifty thousand, you know, uh, per per month uh, and growing quickly. You know, from there, tons of room so, to run. A lot of room to run. Yeah, yeah. tons of room to run. And so, um, you know, we're just we're just getting started. You know, in that in this area, and it's this massive transformation that that um, we're taking everybody through right now and taking their physical world from offline to online. And, you know, it's going to take a few years to do that, right? I, I remember mm -hmm. back in the day, and we all do probably, or most of us anyway, <laughs> you know, you know, Google Maps didn't take off overnight or Google search didn't take off overnight. Yeah. You know, for five years, people were still going down to their library versus Googling it or. Yeah, you used you know, to print your directions. <laughs> yeah, people were still using, you know, AAA paper maps, you know, for five, six years, you know, and, and it took that time to digitize, you know, the external world to get people, really the majority of people over into the, you know, digital world with, you know, Google Maps, Apple Maps and so forth. So there is this logical, you know, multi-year transition when you take any large, you know, market or asset class from offline to online. Yeah. And so we're in the we're <laughs> in the beginning of that. And so yeah, we're we're excited about Matterport Academy. We recently launched it. We heard from our customers, you know, hey, what are all the different ways that we can leverage Matterport when we take our buildings from analog or from offline to online and to digital. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big that's the big you know, customer feedback. And so we launched Matterport Academy really to help our customers understand, you know, what they can really do to unlock the, the, the value of their property, you know, by bringing it onto Matterport. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, one last question for you and we'll, uh, we'll wrap. Uh, this has been super informative. Um, one thing I am embarrassed to admit that I didn't know is that this is a Kansas company, like started in Lawrence, <laughs> Kansas, right down the road. So tell me about that connection. And did you know that? I mean, t you know, how, tell me how big is the company? How many people are in Lawrence and how did that come about? Yeah, we, um, Lawrence is a great engineering education, large talent pool. And yeah. uh, our, uh, our head of engineering- Rock Chalk Jayhawk. That's right. Our head of engineering, uh, Jason Rogers, uh, is there in Lawrence, and uh, he's a he's a Kansas alum. Right and on. Uh, we, long before my time, like I don't know, five, six years ago, seven years ago, maybe, I think we opened up the the Lawrence office there, and it's just continued to, you know, grow as we've grown, and it's it's the uh, the center of our engineering team. You That's know, we've awesome. got a few other folks there, but no, it's a great talent pool. Great, great local uh, community there in Lawrence and yeah. um, continue to grow the office there. So we have, um, oh man, we've, we're have we a little over 300 employees now. Okay. Um, so, you know, we're not, we're not, uh, you know, two guys in a coffee pot, but, uh, or two gals in a, a coffee pot, but we're also not a, a, a you know, 10,000, 100,000 person, you know, uh, a Google yet, but um, we're, we're on our way to create the next big tech platform uh, for sure. But yeah, but yeah. I mean, you said one, you said 1% of the spatial data marketplace. I mean, there's, there's massive growth there. Um, you know, and as, 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 uh, as you guys fill that space, there's going to be a lot of people and hopefully some of those people will be in Lawrence, man. Yeah, absolutely. No, there's, um, no plans to change direction on that one. It's, it's one we continue to continue to ramp up our engineering team and uh you know they're in lawrence so yeah we're right there in your right backyard. Yeah. well when you uh when, when covid clears and everything gets back to normal we'll have to uh we'll have to have you out and we'll, we'll i'll take you to allen field house and if you haven't been there already it, it's uh 
it, it, it's the cathedral of college college basketball i'll leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds good no it was great to see you ryan and yeah i think the last time Last time I hosted you, I think we're, we were in Mount. Was it Mountain View? We, I think we got a. We, grabbed yeah, we had we had dinner in Mountain View. It was maybe two or three years ago. I forget. I was out there for. Uh, I think it was Saster. I was out there for a Saster conference, and I came down to Mountain View. Yeah, it's been a couple of years, but yeah, definitely been a couple. Uh, of years. Uh, yeah, I look forward to it. Look forward to it. Maybe uh, we can go to a Giants KC game. That would be awesome. I would absolutely. I have. I have not been. I've only been to one game at, at I don't even know what it's called now, but Pac Bell it was at the time. Um, oh, and AT&T. then I've got a yeah, AT&T. that AT&T. 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 Yeah. I got a bad taste in my mouth about the Giants though after after our our, our well, missed uh, run, but we got it back the next year. So you did, man. And I'll tell you, I, I was there that year, and um, the Giants were up in that series, and my buddy there in KC uh, said, "Hey, man, come on back. I got tickets," and I was one of I don't know, 40,000 fans, 45,000 in the stadium. And I think I was a yeah. Giants fan. And yeah. uh, KC was up 9-0 or uh, 7-0 in the fourth inning. Then it was 9-0. And everybody was, you know, wanting me to come back, you know, to the next game because I was good luck. For game KC. six, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, was game it six. It was an ugly one to be at. But, oh, and great fans, great fans. I had a, had a, it was a, it was an amazing experience. So Casey's Casey's amazing baseball, fan, baseball town. One of my good friends is the assistant GM for the Royals. And he's just, I mean, the, the leadership in that organization just is, it exudes Kansas city. Like they're just yeah. Kansas city is, is, is just such a great town that the way they've grown that, that team and the, just the front office there is uh, we're, we're pretty proud of them. It was really fun to see them get one. I just hope it's not another 30 years before they get their next one. Yeah. That one took a while. I know. Well, you got the Chiefs there too, man. The Chiefs, uh, you got some, you got some good sports going on. So it's a good we, era. We, we Kansas City, a uh, little known fact, is the only town in the U.S. I think this is true. It could be total bullshit, but if uh, Kansas City is the only town in the U.S. to have in the last or ever actually, um, or no, sorry, last ten years to have a title in three major sports: uh, uh, baseball, football, and our soccer team won a title uh, oh, like soccer, eight years ago. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> but that's all we got. We don't have hockey, so someday maybe or NBA. Yeah, yeah so. you'll get it. You'll get it. But uh, M- NBA is next. You would think so. You would think right. so. Hopefully, we need yeah. the Kings back. Yeah. Well, man. I, listen, I appreciate your time. I've always had just tremendous respect for you and I've and, uh, been following you along the way uh, and would love to work with you at some point. Uh, let's keep in touch, man. Great to, great to yeah. chat with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great to see you, Ryan. And yeah, I look forward to keeping in touch. All right, man. Take care right. of yourself. See you, Ryan. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Jay Remley, Matterport. <laughs>